Hi, hello everyone. I'm a tutor of you plus. This is HTML5 session part 5. To know more about us, please use this website address which I have given in my presentation. So let's see the agenda of our today's session. So today we are going to discuss about uh, navigation bars, uh, label elements, uh, what are the output elements, what is video and media elements we have in HTML5. So with the help of those elements, you will be able to display video and audio in HTML5. And what are the progress elements we have? And what are the section menu elements? And what is embed? So let's see one by one. So header element. So the header element represents the introductory content for its nearest ancestor sectioning content or sectioning a root element so what it basically it uh, it is like the nearest ancestor of a sectioning or a root element or can be a group of introductory or navigative aids so basically you need to keep one one you need to note one thing here so this header element is not sectioning content but it does not it also does not introduce a new session as well as so uh, example of the header is so inside the header part i have given a p tag and hashtag so in that uh, below example article which will also have a header so which is already i have shown you in a previous session what is article how you need to use a header section the same thing so article also can be inside the header section so this is all about the header section you can see here article i have a header another header and p tag and i'm just closing article and just closing the header so next is footer element so it contains the footer part of the page so in the web page most of the popular websites we have a footer what are the information they have given in the footer copy all rights at this particular website.com or else they will give a contact details of their uh, websites uh, email id so something like uh, some of the social media links to follow them so those are the information they will be given in the footer part so with the help of this footer element in html5 you can also create your footer for your page in html5 so this is my footer element so inside the footer i, I have given a p tag so next is section element so basically the section element represents a generic section to thematically group a content so that every section should be able to identified within the heading element as of the child section so that we can also use the section element within the article and also vice versa we can use that so every section should have their theme which is nothing but a heading element to identify that particular region so we cannot use the section element as general styling container so if you need a container to apply styling then we can use a div section because the section element we cannot use a styling if you are using a section for any of your particular element you cannot apply styling with the name of that section in order to use your container to apply styling so that in that case instead of a section you can use div so in a following example i'm just trying to display a single block with multiple chapter so each chapter i mentioned in my session that can be identified by the heading element in the each section so article header i am just having inside the header P and then next chapter first chapter in one section second chapter in another section you can see here I'm just opening a session and closing the session and then comments finally I'm just entering in the new section so this is how 
I'm just for each and every block, I'm just having a separate section so that can be easily identified. So next is navigation bars. So basically, so uh, it is a, a list of links. So ULLI elements, which we have already discussed, those are used to enclose this navigation links. So you can see here in the unordered list, uh, in the LI option, uh, I have they have enclosed all my href, which is like navigation links inside this list bus. So what is HTML5 navigation bar? So using this HTML5 nav element, you can uh, links within the nav tag. So that is what instead of doing like this uh, in, in closing in UL, so you can use the HTML navigation, HTML5 navigation bar, and then you can enclose your navigation bars inside the NAV element tag. So next is label element. So we have attribute and descriptions. So for, what does mean by for? It's reference to a target ID element. That is, means, in, in if you if you are using a label for your text box which i have shown you yesterday's uh, in my previous class practical demo example in that program i would be mentioning a label for my text box so in that i will be using that far attribute so this is how a label uh, inside the label tag you need to use far which is like surname for that particular label so form just like reference to the form containing the target elements. So label elements can be expected within the form because inside the form only we will be creating a text field or password or radio button. So we need a label for understanding purpose uh, why we are creating labels for the understanding purpose what that text, for text field we have really created so we need to have keep a label only possibilities is only within inside the form so it also provides allow you to place a label anywhere in your document so about the label element is used to reference from a action element so in scope of user interface it's used to is the target section of an element just like a type of radio or a checkbox so as also it can be wrapper and enclose the desired action element so like this so label uh, input type checkbox name is cats i like cats so i'm just closing the label so clicking on the target takes the target input will toggle its state or value so label as your reference so using this particular far attribute i don't have to place the control element but what i can do i can match with that my id so you can see here input id cats so here label i have created the name of my label cats so that i can match with that with the id id cats type is checkbox name cats so label for that is this particular id i am just keeping so label for this cats so i like cats i'm just closing the label so that you can use your label wherever you want in the form but the thing is you can match that for this text box. There should be a label like that. You can match with the help of that, creating an ID for that element and then you can match in the label. So you need to note one thing. Uh, you cannot use more than one control element within the label element. So the basic use is like simple form with labels. So the form action for example login is my action and method is post so i'm just creating a label so label for username my label is username you can see here this is the id for this i'm just creating a label so in the far i have mentioned that id so this is the input field i'm just creating a uh, label 
So next is for password, I have created the label, label for pass. So this would be my label for my password text field. So password. Submitting, I'm just closing the form. So um, I'm just getting my form ID. I'm just posting the data, every stuffs. So this is how uh, you can use your label inside the form. And the one thing you can use your uh, label anywhere inside your form. But important thing is you need to link your uh, element and label with the help of your ID, which you have mentioned. So next is output element. So for your output element, uh, you have attribute and description. So your attribute will be uh, like a uh, global attribute or available to any HTML5 elements. So name, it should be a string representing a name of an output. As a form element, output can be referenced by its name by using just a documents or as a form property. So this attribute is also used for collecting a values on a form submit. So for, so what does this for refers? A space separated list of a form element, just like example input IDs for IN P1 that output is mean to display calculations. So uh, that is like basically a far. Form is like string representing that associated to the particular output. If the output is actually outside the form, that attribute will ensure that the output is still belongs to this particular form and the subjects are to collections and submit the form. So next, this is how the output elements attributes are basically working. So next, see, uh, enter into the output element using far and form attribute. So I'll just show you the demo for that. Before that, inline JavaScript is commonly used in form as it's demonstrate. Although the elements or type number, their values are not the numbers, but the text. So if you want to require a values to get calculated, so for that, you need to convert that to your number. So how you can convert? So it is like if you know JavaScript, so converting a string to a number is nothing but you need to use a percent, either parse for float, or a number, so etc. So by that you can able to convert that to a number and then you can perform a calculation. So example I have shown you, so form ID, name, and then input I have given is out dot value equal to. I am just parse inting, parse int of value comma 10 plus parse int of in2 dot value comma 10, so like this. So inside my field set, I'm just displaying my output example so that I'm just uh, adding this two numbers. So this is one text field, this is one text field. So initially value will be zero. If I try entering a value something to that field, this particular will perform. So you, how you, I'm just creating a link to this form. So ID is form one and name is also form one on input out value equal to in dot value means whatever value i'm just entering into the text field it will go here so binary convertation so i'm just putting 10 so in2 means whatever value here it is get it will go here so this is how it is calculating and then displays so uh here output for IN1, IN2, form 1. So this would be output will be displayed here. So this is how it is working for for and form attribute in the output element. So in my end of this session, I will show you a demo for the program as well as. So next is output element with attributes. <coughs> Sorry. So the output name, out1, form, input. So 
you can use either this or this for your output element with those either of your attributes so next is void elements so not all your html tags are same structure while most elements requires an opening tag a closing tag and contents and some elements which we are known as void elements so they only require opening tags so that they themselves does not contain any elements so they are often called as a void elements so i'll just show you some of our void elements so area which is like clickable defined area in an image base specifies a base url which all the links base so br is a line break col column in a table hr is nothing but a horizontal root img is image so input what is input it is a field where user enters a data so link is nothing but links a external resource to a particular document and meta provides a information about the particular document and param what it is defined basically it defines the parameter for your plugins so this html5 standard includes all non deprecated tags from your previous list and commands so it represents a particular command user that you can invoke how this key key gen so it will generates a public key for your web certification source what is source it's like some special media sources for picture audio and then video elements so this particular example does not include a void elements so i'll show you i'm just having a div and i have one anchor tag in that i have a link h3 i'm just having a link to visit and then i have one button with the alert message it will say hello and then another one paragraph tag i have a ordered list inside my li tag and just i'm just closing the in a div tag so and also i have a image tag and then input type number i have a uh, enter your favorite number so that should be my placeholder of my input tag so with the exception of a uh, image tag all these are uh, void elements have only opening tag so this image tag unlike any other tag have a self closing uh, before greater than sign of a opening tag so this is one of a best practice before the backslash so next this is all about void elements so next is media elements so media we have uh, what is like uh, we need to upload audio or video definitely we we want the source height and width will width will tell you a uh, within pixel height is also same it will mention you a height in pixel so source is nothing but it defines audio or video files track for your media elements next is autoplay it will start playing the media automatically in a repeated cycle or mute plays the media without sound until it displays a video is loaded so that is what autoplay so next is audio so html provides a new standard for embedding an audio file on the particular web page so you can embed an audio file to the page using that particular audio element so audio controls you have a source for that audio this is my source file this is my file and type is audio or mpeg i'm just closing my audio tag so next is video i can also embed a video to the web page using that video element so i'm just mentioning my 
uh, in the particular screen i am just mentioning my height and width of my video and also i am just telling this type is video and this will be the source so i can use this particular element to display that so use of html or audio element to embed audio video content into your document so i can have one or more audio sources to specify a source i can use either src attribute or a source element so the browser will automatically choose the most suitable one so audio tag example i will show you a simple video example video src so this is my video file i'm just mentioning auto play which means after this video whatever video i have it will play automatically otherwise if this particular video is will not supported in my browser means i will get a message like this sorry your browser does not support this embedded video so i'm just closing my video and then video with subtitles also i can display but i need to mention my labels what is my source language and then i need to mention what is the uh, label it have so i can close so next uh, this is or the simple video example you can see here with and controls i have this is my link so next source this is my source of my video this is this web vm so second source is a mp4 format src this is my link and type should be video mp4 this is an ogg tag so i'm just closing the video uh, so inside one video element tag i'm just applying multiple videos uploading so the same for audio track simple audio track i'm um, auto play i'm just closing the audio and also with captions is nothing but with the subtitles i need to mention the same like for video i need to mention audio src language and then label so it can be easily understood so next is video header or background so adding a video that will auto play on a loop but no has no control or sound so the perfect video for that you need to use uh, like this auto play muted loop so by by mentioning height and width you need to mention that also for that so the three types of video i have displayed in my src mp4 web m and ogg so Sorry, uh, this CSS will provide a fallback if a video cannot be loaded, but that is recommended to use the first frame of the video as per the posted video. So this is my CSS for my first v, uh, video, whatever I have given. So next is progress element. So parameter max position labels. So for max, i'm just having how much work the task requires in total value how much work has been accomplished already so that is the max i have and position this attributes will return the current position of your particular progress element so and in labels it will have this uh, returns a list of a progress labels if have so next is progress so this progress element is new in html5 and used to repeat the progress of a task so you can tell if you are using the progress element you can set a value uh, but maximum value would be 100 always so your progress bar will be created with the value of 22 percentage so that you can also change your color of your progress bar by setting a style so this is how i'm just uh, adding a style sorry for with the help of my element selector uh, progress and just need to mention a value so i'm just setting the height and width. the same you can also set a color so the browser will use a webkit appearance selector to style your progress and then also you can reset your appearance so now you can style the container itself so this 
WebKit is uh, basically it will work for Chrome and uh, other steps. So I'm just setting appearance to none for my WebKit, and after that, I'm just setting the background color of my progress bar to green. So I will run and show you this also. So for Firefox, it should be like uh, most appearance none. Uh, so this is how you need to set for Firefox style differently. So this is for Chrome and this is for Firefox. For Internet Explorer, 10 plus uh, in IE, 10 plus is supporting this progress element, but uh, that also, however, it does not support the background color property. So for that, you need to use the color property instant like this. So WebKit appearance none, mouse appearance none, appearance none. So height width and just you need to mention color, not background hyphen color. So this is for IE. So in common also, you can use like this for all the browsers. So next is HTML fallback. So for browser that does not support the progress element, you can use a work it's around. So for progress max 100, sorry, value should be 20, and then div class progress bar, and in the span style, it should be with 220, 20% and then progress is also 20% I'm just closing the uh, div and just closing the progress so with the help of a span tag also it will style that but it will ignore the div inside whatever you have so legacy browser which cannot identify the progress until uh, the div selected instant so next is selection menu controls is like how to select from the drop down with the help of a select element in HTML5 so that which the user can choose the option. So you can see here example select name option value and just closing the first option, second option, third, fourth, and just I'm closing the select. How to change the size? So you can change the size of the help of size attribute. So zero or one or standard. But if you want to con uh, have a greater than one, then you need to convert the drop down into boxing or uh, display many lines with one option per line and then scroll in order to scroll through the available option. So this is how you need to change your size. So select name, size, I'm just closing the select. So multi-option selection menu is also possible. So uh, how uh, by default, I can select only one single option by adding a multiple attributes for my user to select a multiple option at once. And then I can submit all the selected options with the particular form. So that is also possible. So by using multiple attribute, it will automatically convert the drop down menu into box as it had a size defined. So the default size when it this occurs will be determined by the specified browser so that it is not possible to change it back to the drop down while allowing multiple selections. So select name multiple. It will allow you to select a multiple attribute, but there is no difference of using size. So this multiple will also allow you to select the multiple option without using any of your size attribute. So using zero will cause a browser to behave in whatever default manner to program, but using one will explicitly set the size resulting from low to high. So this uh, particular options in select inside whatever user will be selected. So option, I'm just closing some option you need to give. So that is important that text inside the option, it not always used and then it cannot be also default which is not specified. So this attribute will control the actual appearance and function of option or a label or the value. 
So this uh, label represents the text which will be displayed in the drop down menu, whatever we are looking for. And the values represent the text which will be sent along with the form submission. If either of those values is omitted, then it will use as the text inside the element as the value instead. So example we can give above could be extended. So option label some option. So note the omission of a inside text and the end tag which are not required to actually construct on the option inside the menu. So if they are included, the inside text would be ignored because both attributes are already specified and the text is not needed actually. So you probably won't see uh, writing this way is correct. So the most common way is like within the value that would be sent to the server along with the inside text and it becomes a label attribute. So option value and some option. So selecting option by default, we can also specify a certain option to get selected in the menu by attaching a selected attribute. So by default, if no option is selected means you, you need to get selected in the menu. First option in the menu will be selected when it is getting rendered. So if more than one has selected uh, attribute means, so the last option present in that particular menu uh, with the attribute will be uh, get on selected by default. So that particular option value, option one, I'm just getting uh, that uh, means that option one will be selected default because I have mentioned selected in my option and then I'm just closing that. So if you are using the option in multiple select option, then it will select it by default. So none other option will get available. So in you can see here multiple. I'm just giving the select as multiple. So both the option by default will get selected. So how you can select as group within the selection menu. So by using opt group element. So the syntax will be very basic by comparing to the other thing so that you can identify the title of a groups containing zero or more option that would be selected within the group. So select name option. This is my value opt group label is fruits. So I'm just selecting as a fruits with the help um, group of option I have selected with the opt group. So fruits fruits what underline halves so banana strawberry so i'm just in the particular group i have selected so next opt group level is vegetable as of now i'm just disabling this vegetable group but inside that i have an option these are i'm just closing the select so when using the option group not all the option needs to be contained so when you're disabling it will disable that particular option with the group manually also you cannot re-enable within the disable group so this is all about select and options so you can select multiple things you can also set select by default you can also select by groups with the help of opt group as well as so next is data list so the data list specifies a list of predefined option for the input element it also provides an autocomplete feature on the input elements. You will see a drop down list of the option as they write. So, input list languages. So, I have given my data list ID should be languages option. I have value PHP per like so. I'm just closing the data list. So, these are the browser supported for the particular data list so this is also like a selector 
in advanced sage in html5 they have introduced this particular data list the one thing is like it will provide a auto complete future on this particular input elements so the next is embed so for embed um, you have some parameters src type and width so src it will give you the address of the resource type is embedded with horizontal dimension height is you will give the vertical dimension so usage this is a uh, new in html5 so most of them will not aware of this embed so this is a, a new they have introduced so it provides integration of point for external such as typically non html they will provide the interaction point or a interactive content so you can see here embedded src i have mentioned something so defining that type it must define the type of attribute embed type as so i'm just mentioning this a video video type width and height so same as video element audio element but the thing is it will provide the interaction point for the non html elements for the external so the main usage of embed in html5 it is a new tag so this is a summary of today's session so we have been discuss about the navigation bars label elements output elements video audio and progress selection menu elements and embed so with then i'm just closing the theoretical session so quickly we will jump off a practical demo of a today's session i will share my entire screen for that so you'd be able to see a practical okay i hope be able to see my screen so okay so this thing yesterday i have shown you so 80 yeah okay so uh, let's uh, this is example for output example so i i have just shown you how to add a numbers so if it is a string first we need to convert that into a parse int so you can see here i have converted in the form inside my field set i'm just adding created two text fields and just i'm creating the output so that whatever i get add in the text field it will get added and then it will displayed in the particular output so let's run this and i will show you the output 18 one minute okay it is here so we'll run in chrome so mostly i will prefer chrome always so you can see here it this is in the drop down i'm just selecting option so here i'm i would select so 5 plus 7 12 so here i'm just giving a negative value of minus 4 so 7 minus 4 it is 3 so like this it will add it so i am given in the field set and legends that's why my output is looking like this so this is how you need to convert into a parse into a float something else and then you need to add so this is the example for how your yeah, output so next is audio and video controls so this is a example of audio tag you can see here i'm just using the audio element source i have given some file name so you need to give what are the audio files you have means you need to give that so type i have mentioned as it is mpg a format audio file so if it is not supported means i will get a message as your browser does not support the audio element so next is for video so this is my video tag i have a width and height for my video control as well as Uh, i have mentioned my source or something uh, have and type should be video mp4 so i have i have also message your browser does not support i'm just closing 
and then and i have also created a progress with the help of a progress element so value i have given as 22 now i will change to 90 so we'll run that So you can see here, so this is my audio. I have not given any audio file to my code. If you want, you can give your system in your laptop or in your local machine. If you have any audio file, means you can give and check, but this is how it will work. So this is my height and width of my video, and this is my progress element. So these are the three things I have wanted to show you so next is like for select i have given as multiple and i have given a selected which means both thing will be selected and also i will show you for not selected as well as i have not selected this option it can be two it can be three and this is not selected okay so now i will run this program it should is like 20 yeah so you can see here I have given selected for this alone. So these two things get highlighted. So now I will remove for this one, remove the selected. I'm just saving. I'm just refreshing this page. The only first one will highlight it. Okay, did you got it? The select option, how it is working? Okay, next is, so this is like, group for uh, fruits and vegetables so how to select uh, as a group of uh, using that selected option uh, using opt group i will run this 22 So I have a group, I have enabled only fruits, vegetables I have disabled. So you can see here. Oh, it is running something else. One minute. Oh, this is 21. So that is 22, sorry. Okay. So fruits is highlighted. So vegetables you can't select because I have disabled. So only fruits you can select. Okay. So vegetable you can't be able to select. Uh, I have done this with the help of opt group. So only the particular groups I can select with the help of opt group. So if I disabled this fruits, what i will get only so you can see here fruits i will not able to select so vegetables i can able to select so this is how you can do that with the help of opt group you can select a multiple groups from with the help of select option so next is data list so data list i have ideas language i have some values it's it's similar to a normal drop down but you will have a auto complete option in this field that i will show you i have already run i think so this is so you can see here auto complete so this is auto complete 
you have in data oh, if you entered i there's nothing p i have h okay so this is the auto complete option okay so yeah this is all about uh, today's session uh, i have given you practical demo as well as if you have any queries regarding my practical or theoretical session please write to info at see you all on my next session thank you